Come on, let's give Jesus praise before we sit down. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's really give Jesus praise. Come on, there we go. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. We praise you and worship you and magnify your name. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing on the earth. We thank you, Father, for this morning, God. We give you this day, God. We invite your transforming love and grace, Father, to touch every heart and every life and every family represented here, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> it's a good day to be alive. I'll try that again. It's a good day to be alive. Jesus is on the throne, and he's drawing near like never before. It's, it, it is such a great season, and I, and I love the worship set that we had this morning. It was, uh, it was intimate and personal. And it feels like that that's the season that we, are, that we are in with the Lord. It feels like God's making himself available in a, such a personal way in this season. I don't know about you, but when God presents himself and makes himself available, I want to accept that invitation. <laughs> when God comes and puts an invitation of intimacy in our hands, I don't want to be the one to ignore that. Yes. I've, uh, I've talked a lot about worship in this house and the value of worship that we have in the place of worship. And Psalms 22, 3, he inhabits the praise of his people. He inhabits our praise. He comes in our praise. Anyone give Jesus praise from your heart this morning? That in that place he comes, and I've also talked about that to me, worship looks like an invitation. Is, let me know if I need to switch this out. <clears throat> it looks like an invitation where Jesus extends his hand to us, and as we put our hand in his hand, he pulls us onto the dance floor of worship and intimacy, but the beautiful thing is that we don't lead the dance. It's, it's our job to surrender to his leading, to be led by the Spirit. And I wanna endeavor to be led by the Spirit further and further and deeper and deeper because as we do, more of his kingdom comes, more of his glory is released, more of his goodness is released. The more that we do that, the more this world becomes transformed to look like his world. Yeah. Come on, thank you, Jesus. And it's happening. Come on. <laughs> It's happening before our eyes, but I want more. I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty. And the Bible says those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. I'm ready for another filling. That I was receiving another filling this morning in worship. And even as I share the word, I'm receiving another filling so that he can pour out more. In fact, I believe his transforming power is going to touch people this morning. And it's happening in front of our eyes. People are getting born again every single week. That is the kingdom coming. This side of the room isn't excited about that. That's all right. I'll try over here. Listen, people are getting born again every single week. <clears throat> That's kingdom transformation. Yeah. Uh, it, yes, sometimes in service, most of the time, people out on the streets doing life. At work, at the, at the cafe, the restaurant, the gas station, the supermarket, people doing life and engaging people, but realizing that they've been filled, so they have transforming grace to give away. 
Come on, thank you, Jesus. Oh, restoring families. You know that we've had testimonies of people missing missing body parts, not not limbs, but internal things that not there, and then it's there. Thank you, Jesus. People with metal in their body, doctor-confirmed cases, metal in the body, next set of x-rays, no more metal in the body. In, in this house, in this room, recent testimonies, testimonies of brain tumors disappearing. Testimonies of brain tumors disappearing, and the person with the tumor wasn't even in the room, but their parents were. <laughs> and prayer gets lifted up for them, and the, and the person with the tumor who is in a, somewhere else starts tingling in their body and texts their parents, are you praying for me right now because something's happening? <laughs> Come on, that is the kingdom of heaven being released in our hour, in our day, deaf ears opening up, marriages being restored, wayward children coming back into full restoration. Come on, that's the kingdom and it's happening right now. And what we give thanks for in the kingdom increases. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, can we just give him thanks one more time? We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. Open your Bibles to James. We're going to jump into the Word. James chapter 1. If we don't have a lot of time, we're just going to jump in. Whew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel him. The veil is thin. It's thin. It, listen, the veil, the veil, Jesus has made himself available since the cross. Right? There's no, Jesus has never looked at a single generation and said, you know what? I'm going to turn the tap of my presence off. It's never happened. It's not going to happen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That he, he is available, but I feel like we're in a season of, by the Lord, where he is leaning in to his people more than ever. Yeah. He's saying, listen, I'm available. <laughs> I'm available. Will you grab a hold? Will you reach through? And touch what I've provided. Thank you, Jesus. But how many people know the devil doesn't like that plan? <laughs> the devil has a opposite plan to get us distracted. To get our eyes on anything else other than how much of Jesus and how much of heaven is available to us right now. And he'll bring anything he can. He'll throw everything he's got at you to get you distracted. To get us focused on other things, caring about other things, worried about other things. Anything he can do to keep us out of awe and wonder in the availability and the nature of God. But guess what? His plans aren't going to win. Because we got a big, listen, that's a good opportunity just to get happy right there. Come on. His, the devil's plans, I'm going to give you a second chance, okay? I'm just, the devil's plans are not going to win. We serve a mighty God. In James chapter 1, starting in verse 2 through verse 8. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. How many people don't want to be unstable? We want to be rooted and grounded in the love of the Father. We want to be rooted and grounded in his truth and his reality. If God is more powerful than the devil, his ways will always triumph the devil's ways. If God is always speaking, then who should we be listening to? (laughs) The devil is also always speaking, but his voice is small compared to the Lord's when we will attune our ear to hear his voice. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to talk about being in alignment with God this morning. Being in alignment with God so that heaven can flow more fully and more freely through our lives. There's nothing that I love more than the moment where heaven touches that situation and that situation bows its knee. I told this story, uh, it was a long time ago, I told it here, but obviously Renee, my wife is from Australia, Um, we go back often, obviously COVID was a little hiccup there, but we go back and minister there. There was a time we were ministering to a lady and she was so physically and emotionally um, uh, abused that she was in very bad shape. And as we began to minister to her, the love of God started to break through. You guys are going to make me work this morning. That's that's all right. I'm up for it. Come on. The love of God started to break through and you could physically watch transformation happening in her life. I mean, she was hunched over, she was in pain, fibromyalgia, all these uh, mental torment, all this stuff, and God in a moment started to break through. And I mean radical transformation. Listen, I am in, we have an amazing counseling center. God works in in different and unique ways. He never does the same thing the same way twice. Like he's always doing new things. Listen, I'm into counseling. But but in this moment, it was that momentary touch. And everything started to change. Her countenance started to change. In that moment, Renee began to prophesy over her about a, a daughter, a wayward daughter coming home. What we didn't know is that she had a daughter who ran away at 13, and she was now 16, and she hadn't heard from her since. And, and obviously, she just, that, she breaks further at that. The love of God is pouring in, the reality that God knows her that intimately. Well, we come back the next year to the same church, and this lady gets up on the stage before I go up to minister, the pastor who's hosting us has this lady come up on stage to give a testimony from the previous year. And she gets up on stage and I'm like, I wonder who that is. I wonder what happened for her. And she starts giving her testimony about how she was physically and emotionally abused and how she was riddled with rheumatoid arthritis. And, And as she's talking, I am flabbergasted that it's the same woman. She is so physically different, I didn't recognize her until she started telling her story. I mean, she is standing up straight, she's beaming, full of life, no more pain in her body, mental torment is gone, she's sleeping through the night, no pain, she is completely well. And then, this teenage girl comes up on the stage with her. To finish the testimony that, that a year ago, that all of a sudden, she hadn't talked to her mom in, in three years, 
The day that prophecy was given, that girl was struck in the heart. I think it was two days later, the next day, she called her mom and said, I want to come home. They got reconciled, living together, loving Jesus together, attending church together. We don't even know the full, the full story until we come back the next year and get to experience the testimony. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What if God wants to do even more? It's not a trick question. God wants to see the world transform more than we want to see it. God is, God is lo not looking for perfect vessels. He's looking for willing vessels. Who will say, God, you have plans and purposes for me, for my family, for my city, for this region. And yes, it is way too big for me. <laughs> but you say you want to do it, so I say yes anyway. Yeah. Do you know what that's called? Surrender. Okay, I'll try over here. <laughs> when you recognize that God has a plan that is too big for you. When God wants to do things beyond our ability, beyond our capacity, beyond our education. When he wants to do things that we can't do, but we know that he wants to do it because we spent time leaning on his chest. We've spent time ingesting, feeding in the word. We've spent time going, oh God, I, I am recognizing that you want to do it even more than I want to see it done. Wow, you have, you have exceedingly, abundantly, massively big plans that I can't do. But you just need someone to say yes. You need someone to say yes and, and to say yes with such a humility and brokenness that God, I don't know how you could ever use me or you would do this, but I say yes anyway. Here I am, God, and you're on your knees at worship. You're in the front. You're pressing in at home. You're praying. That thin place, you're like, I'm coming home. God, here I am. I don't know how. Here I am, God. All I have is my yes. Use me. <laughs> Guess what happens? He starts to use you. And then use you more. And then use you more. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to focus on two verses here. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting, it's, it's sandwiched in these uh, stories of Jesus that he tells, these analogy stories that he gives, and it's right between uh, lay up treasure for yourselves in heaven. Don't lay it up on earth where moth and, uh, moth and rust can, can eat it, but lay up treasure in, in heaven. And then right below where we're going to read, it talks about you can't serve God and riches or mammon. You'll love one and hate the other. And then it goes on and talks about not to worry about what you'll eat and drink. He feeds the sparrows and clothes the lilies. Don't worry about tomorrow. That has enough worry about for its own. Worry about, seek first the kingdom of heaven is righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. We don't have a lot of time, so... I'm chopping it up, but I'm describing Matthew 6. But in the middle of those stories, there's a unique couple of verses there that almost don't seem to fit. But I want us to read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in verse 19 of Matthew 6 about treasure in heaven just to give some context do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven 
where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now here it is. It seems like an abrupt shift. Verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And then from there it goes on that you can't serve God and mammon. 22 and 23, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is good, that's where I want to camp for a moment. And we're talking about coming more fully into alignment with heaven, with Jesus, with his ways and his purposes so that heaven can flow more fully and more freely through us. If your eye is good, Now, I think that it's really easy to to assume that that's talking, that that's simply talking about what you look at, if you look at good things or bad things, and that is absolutely true. But it goes so much deeper than that. That word good there, actually in the Greek means single focus. It doesn't, it doesn't, Yes, all of that about not looking at impure things, not looking at wrong things, keeping your eyes on Jesus. Yes, that is completely part of this equation, but it's so much deeper. The word good there means single focus. And just context, you've heard me talk about it before. Sin, in the original language, the Greek The word sin means to miss the mark. It means to miss the mark or to get off track or to miss the aim for God's high call, his purposes, his plans, his ways, right? To miss the mark with God. Here's the unique thing that this verse, when it talks about good, your eye is talking about single focus, It's where we get the language today of good aim. Have you ever heard, like in archery or shooting context, you're shooting targets and someone says, good eye? Basketball, you're you're swishing them all, good eye. What are they saying? You are focused in, you are locked in on the target. You have good aim. You are focused on the right thing. Guess what this says? It says when, you ha- when your eye is single focused, your whole body is full of light. <laughs> Do you know that in the Greek, in the Greek that this word, it literally, it literally means single focus or single fo- fold. It's the antonym or the opposite of the, of the word multifold or layers or folds. What did we just read in, in James about the double-minded man who is tossed to and fro, who's unstable in all of his ways? How many people know that God is always speaking? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But the enemy is also always speaking. And the enemy through the world is speaking. He's trying to release a narrative. He's trying to get us distracted. He's trying to grab our attention when we're supposed to be focusing on God. But what happens is that we get, we get pulled between two narratives. You know, I'm looking to God one moment, but now I'm listening to what the news is saying. I'm focused on God's holiness, but the world is telling me that women aren't actually women. And that men are, that you can choose your gender. Wait, what, what, what is happening over here? That, that I'm, I'm focused on God and what righteousness is, and then the world is telling me you get to choose what is righteous and holy. Do whatever feels right to you. And what happens is like uh, uh, you're going back and forth like this uh, uh, and you become a double-minded person. 
who is unstable in all of your ways. Your vision has folds to it, layers that were never supposed to be there. And God in this thin place, <laughs> listen, I, the word in the spirit right now is simplicity. The worship set, <laughs> not about bells and whistles and it's coming to the thin place and saying, God, here I am. Yeah. What happens in that place is that God starts to remove the folds. He starts to remove the distractions. Listen, I tell you that this is a season I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to speak to you as your pastor. This is a season to get cleaned up. This is a season to get in order. Yeah. This is a season to let the little, the, the, the burrs and, the, and the, the thorns and the little Klingon things that have been there to get them out of the way. Yeah. Let God in his grace and his mercy remove them so that we can come out of distraction and into his holiness. Yeah. Because heaven is trying to pour out. Yeah. Not conv we don't have to convince God to do what he's already decided to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn the tap on full, on this, the, ho the hose is connected to the, to the faucet. You turn it on full, you don't have to convince the water to come out the other side. <laughs> the, only way, the only way it doesn't come out the other side if, it's, if, it, if the line is crimped. Or it's obstructed. And sometimes the devil gets us focused on God, turn the tap on. And God's like, it's been on, get the rocks out. Yeah. The devil gets unfocused on, why not me? And oh, why did you do it for them? And how come this is happening? All the, all the bad things and all the unstable things of the world. And like, God, why aren't you flowing? And God's like, it's on full. Yeah. <laughs> Get the crimp out and come into alignment. So I can flow. Whew. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I, Mira, are you available to come back up on the keys? <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. I know I'm going... I know I'm going quick this morning, but that's all right. The spirit is still moving. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo. We love you. 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 Oh. In Romans, in Romans 12, to you all, you all know it. Romans 12, 2. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. We're going to go on and read the next verse, but pause there. Present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Listen. This is your reasonable service. And our natural mind would say, but I haven't done anything yet. Are you, are you seeing the picture? The veil is thin. He's saying, come. And you're like, God, here I am. Listen, God, I don't know how metal disappears from people's bodies. But if you wanna do it, I say yes to it happening anyway. I don't know how tumors disappear, but I say yes. 
I don't know which families have wayward children, but if you want to speak to me to them, if you want to release the prophetic unction to them, I say, yes, God, use me. <laughs> and you come and you present your bodies as living sacrifice, and you, you're like, God, any rocks, any, any burrs, any thorns, any thistles, any cling on things, anything that's, that's there that's not meant to be by your grace and in your mercy just take it away God so that what I can't do but you love to do can flow through me thank you Jesus so they can flow through me and he says when you come and say yes God here I am use me he said that is your acceptable service and you're like, I, I haven't done anything yet. I haven't done anything yet. But he's saying, you've done what I need. I could tell, it hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> what he needs is those who will come to him and say, God, I can't do it in myself but I ask you to do it through me anyway. And that's the point he goes, you've done what I need. You've done what I need. I can take it from there. Next verse, and here it is, letting God rearrange our mindset and do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, stand up with me this morning, if you will. Short message this morning, but the word of the season and the spirit is simple. <laughs> He doesn't, he's never needed complex. In fact, I think he avoids it. He avoids it. He avoids it. And he goes to the, not to the theology school of his day, he goes to the fishermen. He goes to the simple, to the lowest of the low. And when he does need a theologian, Saul, he first knocks him off his donkey. He says, yeah, let me help you unlearn a whole bunch of stuff. Let me help you get back to the simple. In fact, listen, in fact, I'm gonna make you blind for three days because your eyesight has too many folds. You've put layers upon layers of man's wisdom and earthly knowledge and your ideas and your thoughts and you got folds upon folds upon folds. You're not double, you're quadruple minded. I'm gonna strike you blind until all you can see is me. Ha yeah. <sighs> He's the father of light. When all you can see is him, guess what you're filled with? Come on, put your hands up this morning. We're gonna end right here. Put your hands up. His grace. <laughs> it's a season of alignment in the simplicity and the beauty of intimacy, just drawing near to him. Listen, getting free isn't a dirty word. It's getting back into alignment. It's getting rid of the things, the rocks that are blocking up the flow. It's just the God, if it's not supposed to be there, take it away. Come on, lift your hands, just. Let the beauty of his grace, let his alignment flow in his love and his grace. And I'm gonna pray.
corporately, we're gonna close, but listen, if you, if you could feel this in the simplicity, you're just like, oh, just come and flow more fully through me. Listen, it can be anything. It can be, it can be little sins, it can be big sins, it can be just distraction, it can be busyness, it can be recognizing that we've let worry or concern have too much place in our thoughts. Whatever it is, if you're like, God, I just need to be more fully in alignment with your flow, the altar is gonna be open. And I believe he's gonna touch some people wonderfully this morning. I had, I had several words of knowledge that I wouldn't trade the worship this morning, dedicating those babies, I wouldn't trade any of it, but so we don't have time to press into it, but I saw God in the simplicity of his presence, God healing the right rotator cuff this morning. I saw the digestive tract and I saw, it was like a clamp on a part of the digestive tract and I declare to you that that disappears this morning in Jesus' name. In fact, I didn't even I didn't even put two and two together until I just said it about the hose being crimped and blocked. Whew. God's released that this morning for you in Jesus' name. Oh. Night terrors are disappearing in Jesus' name. Night terrors are disappearing and migraines that bring, um, it, migraines actually distort the vision. And again, I'm just cluing in. I'm like, oh God, these words of knowledge are the message. He's so good. But migraines, when they come, it's like it distorts your vision even disappearing in Jesus' name. And I see also arches being formed in feet and bone spurs disappearing. The ability to run with ease again. Come on, Father, sorry, lift your hands. All this time, we love you. Come, Holy Spirit. We just invite the flow of heaven, God, flow. If it's there and it's not supposed to be, just remove it, God. You bring alignment so that heaven can flow so your grace can flow. And I thank you, Father, for blessing abounding. Listen, we're closing the service, but if that's you, just gonna have mirror play for a few minutes, the altar of his presence, the thin place. If you're like, you know what? I need to make a stand and step through the thin place. Just come right now. If you're like, I just need to be fully in alignment. God's gonna do it. All you need to do is bring your living sacrifice. Present your body to the Lord. Just come if that's you. Father, I bless what you've done already this morning. I bless what you're doing. And I bless the flow of heaven through every, every priest represented here in every household in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, if that's you, just come. Just come, just come, just come. Jeff, if you want to join in, if you're available, just come. God is doing something beautifully and powerfully.